Welcome to the pre-recording of lecture 25 of MCS 481, Computational Geometry. Uh, we will introduce an, the costs of an algorithm to construct the subdivision defined by a set of lines. For short, we call this a line arrangement. I will start with an example of Seagal. Last time we saw that Sage Math actually contains a very nice uh, way to generate many examples. Uh, in this course, we use the software Seagal, uh, Computational Geometry Algorithms Library. Um, we motivated looking into arrangements of lines uh, by the discrepancy in a computer graphics application. So we will get to this um, application again. Uh, so the main point is that the incremental algorithm has a quadratic cost and that is implied by the zone theorem. So that's the main point of this lecture. Um, connecting the zone of a line, a line that is newly incremented, uh, in added to the subdivision, connecting this to the cost of an algorithm. Okay, but let us first uh, look, uh, think more practically. So why would you want to consider uh, arrangements of lines? Well, you can uh, look at the problem of given a point set, do you have three points that lie on the same line? So we call collinear points, uh, points that are lying on the same line. So I picked this problem from the examples of uh, Seagal. There are many examples in that folder of arrangements. Um, so there are many applications of arrangements. So, but for this particular problem, if you have three points that lie on a line, then the dual of the line is a point, and that point lies on the dual lines, on the three dual lines. So perhaps um, let me briefly uh, get to one of the earlier slides. I will sl show the slide later again. Uh, to indicate what is duality. So at the left here you have a line going through two points. You see that the dual of the line is one point and it is contained in the two dual lines to the points where the original line passes through. If you now consider the point Q1, the point Q1 if you shift it up a little bit, uh, that means that uh, the line, its dual, will actually come down and it will, if the, if it, Q1 lies on the line, the, its dual of Q1 will pass through the dual of the line, so L star. Why is that useful? Well, if we construct a doubly connected edge list, verifying how many edges pass through a vertex, so the, 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 the lines become vertices, uh, the points become lines, uh, the degree of each vertex will actually determine how many uh, lines go through this uh, point and also will then be able to detect the collinearity. Okay, so let me uh, briefly indicate how uh, this application works. So I work with a make file. So I had to add the linking of MPFR. So and uh, the make file compiles the statement. So I'm running this on a Windows subsystem for Linux that has a very nice distribution of Seagull. So the installation was described earlier. Here you see the running of the program dual lines and there were no collinear points. So what you need for this uh, program to run, um, you can 
work within the examples folders and there make it uh, but what I did was copying the files over so you will need um, so there is the points the data set so here you see there are 100 points um, if you want to experiment with this uh, what happens if the points are all on the line so you can also investigate the cost of this algorithm how long does it take to reach the conclusion so the it was almost instantaneously for 100 points but what if you take a million points um, quadratic cost uh, there it may cost you it may take a longer time uh, so you need also two header files so there is the arrangements and now i'm curious to see what's in there here you see the definition of the lines arrangement so um the big object is of course the arrangement but you see the um, constructions that we have encountered earlier to work with doubly connected edge lists so you need also the reading of the objects uh, so here you see the uh, primitives for um, reading the points and uh, perhaps i should show also the code the dual line so we're reading the objects here um, there is this uh, vector of points and we are constructing the dual of a line uh, so here you see that uh, we make a line from the x coordinate and then the negative one and then the minus y coordinate so the dual is here actually lines are represented with the a times x plus bx plus c so here you actually you see the intercept where uh, the duality is y equals the slope times x plus the intercept so everything is brought at the same side so actually here we have the uh, x coefficient we have the minus y so the p dot x is the slope so you recognize here in the definition of the input so you, you see the construction of the arrangement is done indeed with an in, in in an incremental fashion and uh, i mentioned the degree uh, so you can read the code here uh, so if the degree is uh, larger than four so typically it's we, we work with this doubly connected edge list so we have uh, half edges so we have two edges coming in and two edges coming out uh, typically so that where this uh, degree is larger than four you will have more than um, you will have collinear points okay um, first exercise so when I ran this here um, you saw that uh, the, of the 100 points let me run it again of the 100 points uh, it runs extremely fast um, so it, we have now 100 lines that we intersect there are close to 5,000 uh, points um, so how many do you expect uh, well we had 100 times 99 divided by 2 so this is 99 times 50 and that looks about right 4,950 so our point collection may have led to a simple arrangement as we defined earlier okay um, so the first exercise is essentially run this and make your own input um, and now the input sets should actually have collinear points um, all right um, so I try to make the lecture self-contained so uh, let me um, define what we're looking at 
So on input, here is an example, five lines. Uh, at the right is the representation of a doubly connected edge list. So when we talk about an arrangement of lines, we actually have the original lines and the bounding box and the subdivision it represented is represents so in this subdivision what you see are the green dots the vertices you see the regions uh, which are the faces the faces are convex because uh, they are the intersection of the half planes divided by the lines and intersection of convex set is again convex and then you see all the half edges are uh, drawn here so you can rock, walk inside um, clockwise outside the faces you work you, you walk counterclockwise and uh, this is a simple arrangement um, we will have a maximum number of vertices which is quadratic uh, you can also see if you're still thinking about the previous problem that indeed every uh, the degree of every vertex is actually four here, uh, so we do not have collinear points. If we consider uh, the lines as the duals of points. Okay. Um, here is the algorithm that we defined uh, last time. Since we are discussing its cost, it's very good to uh, restate it again. Um, since a line arrangement that is in general position will have n square, or actually n times n minus 1 divided by 2, which is the of the order n squares, in, in since this is n square, we may as well compute all the vertices all at once. So again, if you're still thinking about the collinear problem, step one will actually do it. Um, if you compute all the intersection points, and then you can still see, well, no, I'm sorry, forget about this. Uh, so you actually do need uh, the edge list as well to determine the degree of all the vertices. So uh, this doubly connected edge list is constructed incrementally. So each time we consider a new line and we add this, we find the edge on the border where the line enters at the leftmost intersection. And then the points, so we have already computed all the vertices. So we are going to sort all the vertices on the new line from left to right. And we're going to walk on that new line from left to right, hopping from vertex to vertex, going, keep, uh, keeping, so we're going to add new edges, but we're going to split uh, faces. Um, so, and um, when we split a face, we are going to update the doubly connected edge list. Now, um, it's important here that uh, we have to do as many steps as the faces that are affected. So we're going, this is an incremental algorithm, but in some sense we're going to replace faces by the splitted faces. So, and uh, if, if, if every time when we uh, replace a face, we actually replace it by twice as many. Um, so, uh, it's important that we somehow can bound the number of faces that are being intersected by a new line. So, that's the critical question that we need to answer. So the algorithm is given at a very high level, um, but here I hope to indicate um, what is uh, being considered. So I take my example of the five lines and I colored one of the lines in blue. So that's the line that is being added. 
and in yellow are all the faces that are being affected by this intersection. So the there are five yellow faces, uh, five of the 11, which is already half of them. Um, so five, uh, although five lines, um, so five uh, faces uh, that are intersected. You see that every one of the yellow faces is going to be replaced by two adjacent ones. So we are going to split the edges and we're going to split the incident uh, faces. At the leftmost edge, you see every face can be characterized by a leftmost edge. So finding the leftmost edge will um, find the incident face. And we're going to split this leftmost edge as well, um, adding the vertices. So we can also then get to the twins. Okay, so this is the zone of a line. So let's define this. So if we have a face, uh, then actually we have to talk about the closure of a face uh, that contains all the vertices and all the edges. This is important here because the closure of a face is uh, contained in the zone. Um, so we not only consider the face, but also we consider all the edges because they have to be replaced, and also all the vertices. Okay, so then the important notion is the zone complexity. So that determines the sum of all the vertices, edges, faces that are in the zone of the line in the subdivision defined by this input set of lines, or in the line arrangement. Okay, so what is the important result? Um, so if uh, the number of, um, if the zone complexity is linear in the number of lines of the line arrangement, then actually this implies that the amount of work that is done by adding the lines one after the other will actually lead to a quadratic cost algorithm. Earlier in the last lecture, we tried to reduce this to the line segment intersection problem, a problem that we solved earlier, but that would give us an algorithm which is n squared times logarithm of n, which is not optimal. So the algorithm that we are considering here has an optimal um, cost. Optimal, why? Because it corresponds to the combinatorial complexity of a simple line arrangement. And simple line arrangements are actually the random ones. So whenever you consider a random inputs, uh, the algorithm that we have will be optimal, although quadratic in cost. Okay. Um, Duality again. Um, so in some sense, if you're still thinking about the introductory problem. Uh, so here is the definition of the uh, dual of a point. Uh, we saw this in the code of Segal, where uh, the y is uh, placed at the left, uh, at the other side. So this was where the minus one came in because the lines can also be vertical. Um, so duality is not defined for vertical lines. Um, so that's important here. Um, but we start out with points, so we don't have to be worried about here. Okay, so on the example, I uh, have four points in one line. Uh, the line passes through the points P1 and P2, the dual of the line will be the point that lies on the dual of the points at, in, at that intersection. 
Now there is the incidence. Uh, so if a point is below a line, then the dual of the line is below the dual of the point. So it's important to realize that actually we are swapping the order. We are first uh, or, uh, locating points with respect to a line. Okay, so here is the picture. Um, so the picture that I also showed uh, very early on. Um, so, but now I'm focusing on the discrepancy problem. Uh, so what was that problem again? Well, it's a problem from computer graphics. We consider the ratio of points in a half plane in a unit square. Uh, the unit square corresponds to pixel area. And we are interested in this ratio to determine the intensity of the pixel. Um, now, the discrepancy uh, is the difference between the actual area and the ratio of the points. Um, so if we have 10 samples and three of those samples lie in the half plane in the box, then we say that the area is 3 over 10. So that's the context in which we are working now. So if we are looking below uh, the half plane, so there are two points here. So to compute the discrepancy, we count all the points below a line. In the dual formulation, we are counting lines above the dual of the line. So um, we are looking now, focusing on a point. Um, so you see um, the points Q1 and Q2, they define lines that lie above the dual of the line. Okay, how do arrangements solve this problem? Um, well, here is the definition. Uh, for every vertex in an arrangement, or for every point, we define the level. And the level consists of the number of lines that is, are strictly above the points. Uh, so here you see for uh, this line configuration, so the top vertex, we start at zero, then we have one, one, one until two. Um, so you can verify that actually it's not immediately obvious because this line here goes on and uh, it's actually not really stretched through, but there are two lines above here. We have more twos and the bottom most vertex, there are four lines above it. Now you can start to see a pattern here. Um, so you can think of a line that passes through a vertex. So this would compute for every point essentially from scratch. But you can see there are relationships between the numbers. Uh, so you get the two by adding up um, the one here. Um, so when you go down, uh, it's important to realize that uh, the numbers can only go up. Okay, so compute. Um, we are walking a line here. Um, and while we are walk a line, we actually compute uh, the levels. And uh, from every vertex on the line, we are computing uh, the level of the vertex. All right. Um, so computing the level of uh, a vertex runs in linear time. Um, and actually, if you have to do this, um, for all the lines, uh, you can see that you also get that a quadratic uh, time algorithm. All right. Um, 
here is now how you do this in if you walk you walk the line um, walking from one vertex to the next uh, when do you have to add or when do you have to subtract well um, you add if the edge goes down you subtract if the edge goes up so you can see the rules you add plus one if you go here from two to three from three to four if you walk on this line we follow edges that are going down so every edge uh, we can compute the slope because every edge has a so source and a target so in constant time you compute the slope um, and actually you have to do it only once uh, because if you follow a line you know if you are going up or down so each time when you are at another vertex you meet another line and uh, if you're going down then you are uh, subtracting if you're going up uh, i'm sorry if you go down you're adding if you're going up you are subtracting so that's the rule so um every for a simple arrangement if this is simple then every line is intersected n minus one times so not considering the bounding box so this would be then n plus one uh, vertices but you can see that there are n lines and for every uh, line you have n um, minus one intersection points to consider okay um, and you actually do have checks uh, because uh, every vertex in a simple arrangement will be visited twice uh, you can actually check you can initialize all the counts with negative one and if you it's not negative one then it should have been visited before and you can check if your count uh, matches um, what is already there okay um, coming back to our computer graphics problem uh, from the uh, early beginning so lecture 23 to two lectures back uh, we wanted to compute uh, the discrepancy so the discrepancy gives us actually a measure on how far our intensity is off so we compute this intensity here with the ratio the total sample size is in the denominator and then the intersection is the numerator that gives us an estimate for uh, the area and in for good computer graphics the intensity of the pixel should actually match the area that is in the half plane and in that uh, pixel area now the point is and that was in the previous slide so we can compute um, the um, discrepancy so the number of uh, vertices uh, we can compute this uh, the, the the levels we can compute this in n square time for all the points. All right. Um, switching gears again. Um, so we have to prove that we have an incremental algorithm. Um, so the incremental algorithm works in n square whatever we do with this is then also n square because we have n square vertices you can kind of see how useful the doubly connected edge list actually is and why there are so many examples in uh, if you looked at the, the seagull folder all right uh, here is the zone theorem so if we have m lines uh, the m is not n but you could think about the m is actually the mth step um okay um the zone complexity in the arrangement is actually linear in m okay how do we prove this well without loss of generality we can assume that our line is a horizontal line so then actually for all the vertices we have only one number that we consider 
so uh, we have then the edges uh, so we so the virtue of this is that we don't need to consider whether we uh, sometimes we have to look upwards or downwards now it's now left and right um, so we will um, look for the left bounding face and the right bounding face so these are the um, edges where we are going to um, enter and leave a face all right uh, we will prove that and actually there's a typo here so this is left bounding edge uh, too many face uh, words here but we will show that the number of left bounding edges is less than or equal than 5 over m and the 5 is the constant uh, 5 times m i'm sorry so 5 is the constant so we have a complexity of the number of left bounding edges that is linear in m so again uh, the zone of a line uh, determines all the faces intersected by the line okay so this is the outline of the proof um, so let me um, define uh, the number of left bounding edges so this is the lemma here uh, this is the critical part so we will prove uh, by induction so um, if m equals one we only have one line to consider and uh, five is indeed an upper bound so um, it's, it's true but it doesn't really say well, how do we get to the five uh, i hope that will become clear so in the general case um, we have a horizontal line so let l1 be the line that has the rightmost intersection that's the line that we're going to delete so we now have one line left so we started with m we deleted one so the rightmost intersection with the line is not considered and we apply the induction hypothesis okay what we need to show now we are have this line l1 at the rightmost intersection we have to show that there can be no more than five new left bounding edges when we're going to add this now so now actually we are adding l1 to l okay all right um so assume um that here we have the l and the l1 the l1 is the so we relabeled the lines the l1 is the line that intersects uh, at only one point so how many edges do we see well we see three vertices u v and w and you see also see three red lines drawn so we see this uh, then we write it down so for the proof uh, we have to uh, write down where the edges are uh, so these will be three these will be five new edges that are being added as a consequence of um, this line l1 so in the general case this um, proves the induction hypothesis so the line l1 intersects um, at one point um, all right so there could be more edges uh, involved here so the point of this uh, slide here is to indicate that uh, if you consider that l1 again uh, and here i had only l2 and l3 so here in this very simple case there, there is not much more but suppose that there was still an l4 and an l5 then this would also be intersected by l1 however uh, i'm only we only considering here the zone um, so the edges that will be um, belonging to the zone complexity okay um so it 
we actually are done if we are uh, considering only simple arrangements. But suppose now that some of the uh, vertices collide with each other, then how many edges appear in that case? Um, and actually, this is where we have the bound. Uh, so uh, if you, we look at special line arrangements, and when we defined line arrangements, our first examples were actually indeed special, uh, but it should be less than. So the 5 will be a sharp upper bound for simple arrangements, but not for uh, the special cases. So that's the purpose of exercises 2 and 3. Uh, 2 and 3 that actually are the same, but for the completeness of the proof, uh, they should also both be handled. All right, um, I'm done in 35 minutes, um, which is good. So there is actually only one statement. So we have proven the zone theorem that gives an n-square cost of an incremental algorithm to construct a line arrangement, a line arrangement which is a subdivision defined by a set of lines. And because for a simple arrangement that has a combinatorial complexity that this n squared, this is an optimal algorithm where the cost matches the complexity. Okay, um, so there are two types of exercises, paper and pencil, and then exercises such as exercise one, which invite you to, to play with the software. Uh, the Seagal documentation has many more examples of arrangements of lines, um, so look at them. Um, and also consider the exercises in the textbook. Um, so we are in week nine. And we are closing off chapter 8 in the textbook. Um, so we have three more chapters to go, 9, 10, and 11. These are three chapters that we will study carefully. Then we will try to summarize the remaining chapters in one lecture. Okay, in the next uh, lecture we start the uh, Dolony triangulations.